Everybody. Hey everybody, we are live and it's Q&A time. Welcome to our first uh, Ecamm Live Q&A session. Yeah, this is going to be fun, huh Ken? Yeah, Katie wants this to be a monthly event. I'm Glenn, by the way. And I'm Ken, as you can see by our titles. And um, we are actually coming to you live from Ecamm headquarters, right? Ecamm HQ, that's what we like to call it. And uh, we are in the same room, sitting next to each other. Hey even though we decided to use two cameras and two mics. Because when we go live from Ecamm headquarters, we like to plug in all the things. Yeah, we got, the, uh, we got two cannons here. Two, I'm can on a, uh, two cannons, two tripods. Two mics. The uh, stream deck. What else do we got here? We got a Focusrite audio interface for this mic. Yeah, we didn't have enough ports to plug everything into. So the mini recorder and the cam link, they're just sitting here on the table. Yeah, but this is, this is going to be the fun part of this live, is that this is our first, first of these, these Q&As. And the, the idea of these Q&As is we are going to talk about anything we want. We're going to be taking questions from viewers. We're going to be going over some features that we feel like maybe deserve a little bit of um, attention that people might not know a lot about. We might um, do some, some screen shares with you and show you a little bit about the product. Maybe some improv, maybe some impressions. Yeah. I wish I, I, wish I had the ease on camera of someone like John Eric. Um, fortunately, I'm a little bit awkward on camera. Um, oh, wait. Um, so, so Dean is saying, look, so this is, we're getting some, we're already getting a little bit of like suggestion here. Hey, Glenn, look to the other side instead. Oh, so when I look at Ken, I'm looking the wrong way. So. Okay, it's tutorial time. <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys how I switch. This is, a, this is the first thing I'm gonna show you is how um, to switch cameras during a split screen. But then I'll be looking on the wrong side, Glenn. If you switch us, it'll be backwards. Oh, I'm gonna show you anyway. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to... Um, Why don't you mute your computer so the pops don't come in? So I'm gonna go and do a live demo here. So. So now you can see, um, hopefully see my computer screen. And what I'll, I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to this little gear button here. Can everyone see that? And I'm going to click this. I'm going to click swap cameras. Now that's going to do exactly what it says if, if this works. Ready? Are you ready for this? This is, might be a little confusing. There we go. Now we're mislabeled. So I'm going to grab my name, bring it over here, Glenn over here. It's as easy as, as dragging it with people yeah. ask, how do I move my overlays? How do I, how do them? It, it, it's even easier than people think it's going to be because they're just dragging it. And to resize it, um, you have two options. You can either grab it by the bottom and just stretch it. Or if you're on top, you can just kind of use that. I don't even know. What does Apple call it? A reverse pinch. You can reverse pinch it to make it yeah, you can pinch and zoom. Uh, so bigger I, and pinch it to make if it. If I want to change the size of this, I'm, I'm just like I'm pinching and zooming on my trackpad and it's just changing the size of the overlay like that. So, and, and I, I mean, yeah, there's so many things I could show you about these overlays. Let me go back to live demo mode. So, say I want to make another overlay, um, a copy of this overlay. If I hold down the option key and I drag, it makes another. Isn't that cool? So that's pretty standard Mac fare right there, right? Option key means double, and for you European viewers, it may be called the alt key, fair warning. Now, what about if I wanted a new, so let's say this can didn't exist yet, and I wanted a second overlay in the same font, same size, and um, if Ken's gonna be looking, I can actually, yeah, so, so same font, same size, but perfectly lined up horizontally with that overlay. I'm gonna grab this option and shift. See, and now it's constrained to that axis. So I don't have to worry about it not lining up. I can double click it to edit it, type in Ken, and now I have a Ken overlay. So, so to just a few little um, little things about about how um, how we do that. So this is a special uh, year for him. I don't know if you guys caught the post month, but 
We've been selling software together for, for 20 years now, about 20 years in one month. started in June of 1999, and that's when we picked the eCam. Since then, we have actually forgotten what it means and, and why we picked that name, but I'm going to go on the record right now as saying eCam is just another for ease of use. The E is for ease, and the cam is for cameras, because almost our products involve cameras. Um, in actuality, the, okay. the reason, okay. the reason that we, I, I, I registered that was because it was something camera related. Yeah. And back in the late 90s, it was impossible to find a five letter a name dot com that nobody had tent. People were just registering combinations of all letters, trying to get all the names uh, that they could. They would sell them to somebody someday. Uh, we ended up cam dot com. Um, we don't act have the ecam Twitter um, because there's no, somebody no. named um, with a first name who starts with E and the last name Cam. Oh, um, nice. Edith Cam or something who snagged oh, wow. who snagged the ecam Twitter. Um, but very interesting story, Ken. Yeah. So we have some some um, comments here about about the audio quality. What are we What are we getting? Um, it's not that great, and I think you know what it is. We have um, we never done this before, but we have two mics in the same room, and I think that they're they're just kind of battling it out. But we could just go all both go off the Yeti. Do you guys want to hear us experiment with some audio? Totally. So I'm gonna let me show you what we're doing now. Back to live demo mode. So right now, um, here's our system audio, and we have two mics. But if I want to remove one of these mics, it's as simple as this minus sign here. We're down to one mic. Let's use the open mode. Is that what that knob does? Yeah. OK, now we're just down to one mic. It's kind of in the, in the shop. Though. How do we sound now? Can you guys hear us still? Yeah, I think so. Now we should just be having, now, we're, now we just have that one Yeti, which is in front of neither of us. but. Yeah, let us know. And Al saying, no, there's a connection problem. I don't know. Well, now we're just on a USB mic. So hopefully that sounds OK. Let us know how we sound now. Too quiet now. OK, turn up the game. Live troubleshooting. OK, now we got the game further up. So can you guys hear us now? So now this mic is just a decoration. Decorative mics. All right, so decorative mics is, is um, something that you always want to make sure to, um, to have in your broadcast. It sounds like, uh, it, look, it makes me look like I'm a, I'm a producer here. I think it sounds okay. pretty, it sounds fine now. Yeah. It sounds fine. So if you're still having audio trouble, it's your, it's your end. You need, to, you need to fix your computer speakers or something. Yeah. Or, may, or may, uh, Glenn, the speakers on Glenn's laptop actually blew out a few weeks ago. So anything he listens to on his computer sounds all staticky. And it's not, it's his fault. Right. Anyway, so to the Q&A. Is anybody hitting us up with any questions? Um, we did, I, I actually saw a, an interesting question go by. Ooh. Um, so Carol, um, thank you for joining us. Thanks for tuning in. Um, Carol wants to know about the comments um, and why they don't come in. I'm not sure. The comments when you're broadcasting to Facebook um, should always be coming in during the broadcast. The, um, the trick is um, if you're using a stream key for your broadcast, Ecamm Live is not going to get comments. And that's because comments are only going to come in when you generate, when you created your broadcast um, with Ecamm Live or you scheduled it and then joined that scheduled broadcast with Ecamm Live. When you're using a stream key, that is, um, it's just a sort of a, Ecamm Live doesn't even know that it's Facebook. It could really be anything. So um, Carol, if that, that maybe would explain why you're not seeing the comments. If you're not seeing them, um, make sure you have this comments and reactions window open. So in Ecamm Live, there's this window here, the comments and reactions window. And if you drag this out, you'll see the comments start to get bigger and bigger. You can scroll down and you'll see the comments. Oh, maybe, it does she think they're supposed to appear on the screen automatically? Maybe, maybe. maybe. So to answer, to, uh, Carol, I, I'm not sure what point you're at, but uh, we have we are seeing the comments appear in a different little palette on the Mac. 
And then when Glenn sees one he wants to highlight, he's bringing it out into the broadcast um, by hand. Those aren't those aren't appearing as people as people make them. All right. Um, so so here's another here's another comment from Carol. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on her head, and that's going to basically promote that comment to the broadcast. So now you see the, the comment on the screen has changed. This comment here is actually an overlay. Just like I was showing you with the text overlays at the beginning of the broadcast, um, I can grab this, I can move it around, I can resize it with pinch zoom, and I can, I can actually pull this little handle here on the end and sort of change the line wrap without changing the size of the font. Yes, and to answer that second question, Carol, you actually, yeah, you need to manually bring in the, um, the comments. We don't, we don't automatically slide those in there as they come in. Um, we, we didn't think people would want uh, that. Certain people have asked for like a, com a real-time comment ticker, but the way we've, we have it in Ecamm, You'll bring those in um, by hand, either yourself or, or someone producing the show next to you is going to bring those in um, as, as you want them to. They're not, that, that might be the, the uh, disconnect there. Oh, it looks like we got a, we got a really, really nice um, audience going on here with lots of comments coming in. So, uh, so Billy has a question about a green dot. Let's see it. Anyone seeing a green dot on Ken's shot? Or is that Billy's monitor? I don't see a green dot on our monitor. Oh, so that's one piece of tech we forgot to mention that we have running here. Um, we are using Ecamm Live's video monitor feature, which is part of the pro plan I can show you how that works right now. Let me go to my NDI cam so I can show you what I'm talking about. So this is my phone camera. Um, now I have all this stuff plugged into the camera, I mean into the computer. One of the things I have is a, is a monitor. And so here's a monitor on our desk. And what's on that monitor right now is the actual broadcast. And the way I'm doing that is over here in the, sorry, my screen's so dirty. In the output menu, I have picked the Dell monitor as my, um, as my output. So what that's doing is that is just putting the real-time output of our broadcast onto um, this display so that Ken over here can yeah. see what's going on over the broadcast. There we go. Live demo. Yeah, so to answer your question, it's not on our end, I don't think, because we're not seeing it. And I'm not seeing it when I watch on my phone here. So probably your screen. Um, some Macs do have dead pixels in their screens. Getting a question from uh, the, the, the famous R&B group from the 90s, Tony, 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 which is, um, is, it an, is there an overlay that can have a hyperlink for viewers to click? Uh, Not that we know of. I don't think Facebook has that. YouTube has that, right? Like the ability to, to add like an annotation. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that Facebook live streams don't have any sort of component like that. I know that they have the ability to add a poll, which is similar, and that that's something that's going to kind of show up during the broadcast. So definitely take a look at Facebook's poll feature. It's actually kind of a neat um, way to interact with your audience during your broadcast. I but mean, it, you but, can paste links into the comments that yeah viewers can click. Yeah, but you not, can say like, I'll put that in the comments down below, yeah, and it will come through. But I don't think there's a way to actually add a hyperlink. That's a good question, though. I, I've never seen that before. I'm going to say no. I'm going to go with no. I'm going to definitively answer that no. Kevin's asking about 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 um, auto populating comments. So this is interesting. We'd love to hear about. Um, let me move this down so it's not in front of our heads. Um, we've never really had a way 
in the app to um, to where it's kind of bringing in comments automatically as they come in, like sort of into the stream. Yeah, I mean, and part of the problem is like, say you're doing like a stream, you've got 25 people watching and commenting, and their comments are coming in, do do do, nice and slowly. Stop moving that. I can't Nick help it. Crazy. Stop. Stop moving it. Stop. <laughs> um, if you have people commenting at maybe the rate of once every five seconds, that's that an auto populating comments might might look good. But if you're someone like John Eric and you've got people commenting at the rate of like ten comments a second, the auto auto populating comments are just going to be like speeding through faster than anybody can read them. Um, but I do like the way of some way to um, advance the comment manually, maybe. Yeah, and and Kevin mentioned Stream Deck. Now I know a lot of our viewers right now are using the Ecamm Live beta, but if you're not, um, the reason that Kevin's mentioning Stream Deck is because the beta of Ecamm Live right now has a Stream Deck support, so I can um, native Stream Deck support, so I can I can say like I want to switch to me to the shot of me um, just by pressing a button on the Elgato Stream Deck device. Um, or I can go back to the two shot, and it's it's working pretty well. And one of the suggestions he had was that one of those stream deck buttons could actually just bring up the most recent comment that came in, and then if you press it again, it kind of just hides that comment. So that way, I could be kind of driving all these the question and answer through the comments. There wouldn't really be a good way to like pick um, pick which comment you want to show using the stream deck. But it could be the most the most recent one, maybe. And, yeah. and John Eric is mentioning the um, the chat widgets. So this is something else from the beta. I knew we'd end up talking about the beta. Um, the beta is also adding the ability to add um, widgets to the stream. A, a widget is a, is a little bit more of an advanced feature where you're bringing in sort of a dynamic web page overlaid over your stream. And since that web page can know things like you know what your com what comments are coming in, um, that can it sort of automatically display things over your broadcast. And John Eric's mentioning that it sounds like Restream has a chat widget that we could bring in to the broadcast. Yeah, widgets are going to be huge. Um, but it is a little bit of an advanced feature because you've got you've to know what you're doing. It's not, it's not automatic. But um, yeah, there's some, well, there's some setup involved for sure. Yeah. We should be able to figure something out. Um, Claudia has a, has a question. Um, she saw a demo where people hit um, the like and thumbs up and smiley face and it would show on the broadcast. Um, I don't know if that was Ecamm or not. You know, it's, it, that might have been a widget that you saw happen um, there um, tied into your Facebook. Yeah, I don't know. That, that's not something that we've ever had. Um, it does show up to you as the person streaming uh, in the app, but it doesn't actually go into the live stream. Um, someone else was requesting that recently. It wouldn't probably be that hard to add that as a feature um, to actually have the, the thumbs up like float up through the actual video. It would be in there permanently. Um, but, it, but it might be fun for everybody to see the hearts and the thumbs up coming up through the video. Let us know what you guys think of that idea. Would you actually want the reactions going directly into the stream? Um, let, let us know what you think about that. Uh, any other questions coming in, Glenn? Or? Um, well, Al was, um, Al was um, still wondering about our audio. And to answer your question, yes, we, did have the, we do have the focus right plugged into a hub. And he's saying that might not be such a good idea. Because um, when that hub gets busy, the audio coming through that might get a little, a little broken up. We do have a lot of things plugged in. Are they hearing audio issues? Um, people were saying that my mic, that it's just decoration now, is um, was breaking up a little bit. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so, this is this is. I think this is going pretty well. Um, it, I was just telling Ken when we were setting up that every time we we set up to do a broadcast, it's um. We we get so many ideas about about how to use the app, or what we should change in the app. Sometimes we find little issues. And, um, and I think that um, one of the things that also came in handy setting this up was um, another pro feature, which is the um, audio monitor. So just like right now, um, we're using the video monitor feature to 
um, put, my, put my image on an external display that Ken can also see. We also have an audio monitor feature. So if you look here um, in the output menu, these are all pro features here. And one of them is audio monitor. And this is basically listing out all of my, all of my audio outputs except for my built-in speaker. And if I were to plug in headphones and then pick my um, headphones here, I would be able to kind of hear in real time um, exactly how um, we sound. Obviously, I wouldn't want to have that turned on for my whole broadcast because it would probably drive you nuts being able to hear yourself in your own ears. But it's a good way to check the audio on the fly and see how you sound. Now, um, I see a question coming in here from um, uh, uh, Richard. He is asking, is there a way to start and stop, uh, he's saying recording, with key commands? Um, I'm not sure if he means recording at the same time as doing a live stream or just or whether he's using the record only feature to just make to use Ecamm Live to do just recordings, which is a great use for it. Um, there is a key command, right, Glenn? I feel like there is. It's in the um, it's in the Ecamm Live menu on the yeah, menu bar. Oh, ooh, Apple P. Apple P. Yeah. I'm just looking right now um, in my Ecamm Live, and I'm seeing. Um, and for you people who started recording. using Macs like after 1990, uh, that's command. A little floral leaf symbol, not Apple. Because Glenn, there hasn't been an Apple on the button. Oh, um, there hasn't? In a long well, there's time. There's no Apple on the key anymore. <laughs> no, there's not. It says command, and then there's just a clover leaf. But that used to be an Apple key. That's why I called it an Apple key. Yeah. I say it too. So, another neat feature that I think it would be fun to show off is a couple of. You saw me um, bringing in um, the, the phone camera a couple times. And the way I did that was through an app called NDI Cam. And it's actually really easy to use because it's completely automatic. Um, you buy NDI Cam on the App Store. And let me show you my phone screen right now. So I'm going to plug in my phone so I can show you the screen. Plugging it in. Getting plugged in. And I'll add this in. Tiny. So here's my phone, and I downloaded this app. I think it was like seven dollars or something from um, from the App Store. It's called NDI Cam, and I'm gonna open it. And it basically is um, just a, a really basic camera app. But the neat part about this is, you see what happens is, well, that's my phone. That's confusing. I'm gonna unplug. What happens is. As soon as you open that app on your phone, a camera source comes right into Ecamm Live automatically. You don't have to install anything on your Mac. You just have to make sure your phone and your Mac are on the same Wi-Fi network. And now I have a wireless camera. Pretty neat, huh? And I'm still on live demo mode, so I can show you. It's also coming in as a microphone. So if I wanted to use the mic on the, on the phone, I could pick my phone, and that would come in um, automatically. And this is a good way like, to show like, if I want to show you the stream deck, or the focus right, or my computer, there's the command key with no Apple symbol. Um, it's just a quick way to, um, to you know, get a close up of something. I'm not sure if I'd use it for, um, I'm not sure if I'd use it for my whole broadcast. Yeah, uh, someone's saying in the comments they, they got that app and they tried it, and it was really, uh, they, they didn't like the quality. Um, your, your mileage is going to vary on that app because it's going over Wi-Fi. So if your Wi-Fi gets busy because maybe you're, I don't know, live streaming or um, your phone's uh, connection isn't good, you're not going to get a, you're not going to get a high frame rate and what you might get is little um, jumps in the, in the stream, little, little uh, pauses. Yeah. Well, also make sure nothing else is hogging your network. And also when we were starting up, when we were setting up um, earlier, um, for whatever reason, my Mac and my phone were on the two gigahertz network, and it was really um, the quality of NDI Cam was not ideal. And then I switched it over to the five gigahertz network, um, and that made a huge difference in the quality. Hmm. So really? make, make sure that if you have one of those wireless, 
those Wi-Fi routers with the two gigahertz, the two point four and the five G gigahertz networks, make sure you're on the five gigahertz hmm. because that made a huge difference. Yeah, we are using Wi-Fi on uh, for this broadcast. A lot of people get nervous about that and they want a hardwire Ethernet, but we've never had a problem using uh, Wi-Fi in the office here. One thing we have noticed is the more computers are in the office, the busier the Wi-Fi gets, whether or not they're doing anything or not. Because just a Mac kind of sitting there open is actually doing a lot more than you would you might think it's doing. Yeah, that's right. I feel like we did see an issue where you had your Mac open and you were doing who knows what, but it was definitely interfering with my bandwidth. I'm like just sitting on. Yeah, even setup. things like AirDrop, just broadcasting, advertising the Mac to other computers. Um, can really take down the Wi-Fi really hard. Uh, this is an interesting question. Thanks for joining us, Terrence. The, um, so he's asking about um, doing video or a live feed as a background for the chroma key instead of just a still photo. That's a really good question. As, as, as people who have used Ecamm Live before um, have probably seen the chroma key feature, um, I can show it to you right now. Ken, why don't you put up the green screen? Switch over to the back to live demo mode. Uh, move it a little over to. No, we can show the, the bottom. Okay, so, so now I've got my green screen here. And I'll turn on um, green screen. My decoration mic! And. Um, I'll pick this tropical island, and then all that's really left to do is adjust, and you want to move the slider until uh, the border goes away. Like, see how if I move it here, like I have like a like this border on my cheek, that's just gonna make, just instantly make people know that you use a green screen. So you want to keep adjusting it a little bit so that that border goes away. I mean, it's maybe chopping off a little bit of my flyaway hair, but at least I don't have that. Um, that sort of green yeah. screen beard. You want to be somewhere between having a border and having your hair start to sparkle. Yeah, that's a good way. And then um, what Ken wanted me to show you was um, this mask edges button. We don't really give a lot of um, information to you about what this mask edges button does, but essentially what this is going to do is it's going to look around the edges of your green screen and say and try to find sort of edges that aren't filled with the green screen. And it's a little bit of artificial intelligence going on here. But if I click this, see what it just did? It just filled in this area. It said, oh, I think that's supposed to be part of the green screen effect. And it filled in that edge piece there. So the downside, though, is now, now that's blocked. So if I'm waving my hands around, I'm half Italian, it's going to get it's gonna get blocked. But it's just a nice little feature in case your green screen's not big enough or you can't get it close enough to you it's going to automatically take that edge out of the green screen. Now, back to the que Terrence's question here. Please, demo. So, um, Terrence's question is, can I get a live feed back there? Right now, you can only pick an image in the green screen, but there is a workaround to get um, to get video back there. Oh yeah, yeah. So the way you do that is using um, video mode and a picture in picture. I can quickly show you how to do that right now. It's pretty quick, pretty quick to do. I will pick um, a video from my video menu. And now this video is playing. Turn down the volume here. Okay, so now you see um, a video playing. Now what do I do? I am going to turn on green screen. Transparent picture in picture. Check box. And now you see what's happened is the tropical island is gone, and the, well, the green screen is just showing through to the, the video. It's like a little edge. That might be coming from the um, scanner. So, and then you can. Of course, you want to make yourself a little bigger. And I think there might be a maximum, so like if I go to classic, classic shape, I can make myself a little bigger. 
but there you have it. So now I am um, I am inside the video. So turn off the demo. Let me turn off the demo mode so you can see. So now I'm inside the video, and um, and that can that can apply to the video. I don't know if you can key yourself into another. Um, so if I wanted to key myself into another camera shot, I think I can do that too. Did everyone follow what I just did there? The key is this transparent picture in picture checkbox in the green screen setting. Glenn, when you're like kind of on the side of the, the screen in that, like with the kind of white on the other side, all I can think of is like a, like a John, Johnny Ives, like Apple uh, clip, like when, on the right. Instead of spinning Ecamm logo, we're like a spinning MacBook Pro. And he'd be like, the key to the Ecamm. Our, our metallurgists have been working day and night to create the finest metals to make this the thinnest, most luxurious, shiniest MacBook Pro in history. We can't sleep until the MacBook Pro is paper thin. All right, so if I want to, I think, I can see if I can key myself into Ken. So if I can, I will add myself as a picture in picture. Okay, yeah, there we go. It's so much darker than you. Okay, um, different cameras. So, so now I, okay, this is, we should have done this from the beginning. This is the best. Wait, this is so confusing. Okay, so now I'm. I hope we we answered your um, your question, Terrence. Um, but so, this is me with a transparent picture in picture over Ken's video. And um, yeah, apparently that is quite possible to do, although a little bit confusing. Should we just conduct the rest of the um, the Q and A like this? Yeah, but can we figure out why I'm so tired? There we go. I think it's just the the iris of this camera with your black shirt and the white background. All right, I'm just going to put myself back to me <laughs> with my um, in my office. All right, can any other questions coming in? Um, someone wants to know what is that echo? I don't know. What is that echo? We are in like a uh, we're all we're all sharing the same microphone, so it could just be an, an actual echo in the room, like a reverb. Echo. Echo. I don't know. Is Andy I can not, is still on? No, it shouldn't be bringing in an echo. It must just be the Yeti. Yeti. Um, picking up background news. Ecamm headquarters is like it is on um, an intersection. So a lot of times we have a lot of a lot of traffic noise coming in. There's a rotary. There's a rotary out there with um cars going around it, and sometimes police trucks and fire trucks. Uh, other people saying, no, they're not hearing an echo. Yeah, I think John's right, it's just the room we're in. We don't have like a nice sound padded studio. Um, yeah. Hi, Midori. Midori's watching from the West Coast. Um, to Tony, we're not using a mixer right now. Um, the focus rate's here on the desk. We were using it to bring that other microphone in, but we abandoned the two mic strategy um, pretty early on in the broadcast because it was creating some uh, uh, audio quality issues. So now we're both yelling into the same um, Yeti microphone right right here. Oops, I should probably leave that. Leave that yeah. Here. Well, th this has this has settings on it. What if we do um, that setting? Yeah. How does it sound now? Hey, Steven. Okay, I just changed the pattern on the Yeti. We'll see if that makes any difference. Hmm. Uh, test, test, test. This is really fun being live. All right, any more questions? Anything you want to demo, Ken? I think you should demo um, how you can bring in an animated GIF into your stream, how easy it is. An animated GIF? A lot of people don't realize this about Ecamm Live, but it is the world's easiest live streaming program for bringing in animated GIFs. Um, other programs might make you click multiple times. Um, with Ecamm Live, you simply take your animated GIF file and you drop it into the um, into the stream, and boom, it just it just it just works. And when you want to get rid of it, you just click the close box, and there it goes. So, um, are you talking about like an animated GIF, like? Um 
like a like a rainbow unicorn dancing or just like some random like actually something with a practical purpose either one so it could be like a practical animated gif or just a um a um an impractical animated gif um carol carol's actually talking about um is asking about um, a way to keep setting up set up for a main shot and other scenes for later use um so and she's mentioning locking and overlay so this is this is a good question um, and a scene so the, the 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 way we did scenes at ucam live they are essentially like a, um, a a palette of things you can set up and then when you switch back to that scene everything is the way you left it but what's a little tricky is you can make changes to your scenes on the fly and those changes are going to stay in your scene so when carol talks about locking a scene I can show you what that means here. So here is my scene window over here in the corner. And if I if I say I have this set up and I want to so I have me, I have my green screen background, I have my title over here, um, and I want to lock that, I'm gonna press this little lock button here. And now this scene is locked. I can't accidentally make changes to this. In fact, if I try, I get this little message scene locked and with an option to unlock it. So that is what scene locking is. It's a really useful feature. And now if I were to promote a comment, this is interesting because like now what happens when you promote a comment, you'll see that's gonna come into this overlay section called show in all scenes. So that's not still not gonna affect your scene. Now that, that comment is now in all of your scenes. Anyway, that's scene locking. So thanks, Carol, for mentioning that. It is quite um, quite a useful feature, we think. So my favorite feature in the latest version 3.1 is the ability to bring in a Canon as your as your camera. Um, I think this might be a little bit underrated because I'm not aware of any other apps that can do this. Um, there are hacky ways to do it, but in eCam it's completely automatic, and a lot of questions we get is. What cameras are compatible with that feature? Um, as far as we know, any Canon DSLR from um, any time seems to work for that. Um, we have uh, three cameras in the studio here. We have a, a 50D that I'm talking on right now. 50D, this is a camera from eight years ago maybe, maybe more. It doesn't even have video recording capabilities. Hmm. Uh, as a matter of fact, but when you connect it over USB to the Mac and turn it on, and there's a couple things that make it work better. Removing the memory card and switching the camera into P mode, boom, it just shows up as a camera in Ecamm Live. It's fantastic because you can use whatever lens you want and the colors and it just looks so good. Um, downside to the 50D is you lose autofocus when you're in this mode. So if I come forward, I'm going to get blurry. So I, I, we just have to focus it ahead of time on manual and then just kind of make sure we stay in the same spot. We yeah. also have a Rebel T6i, which is the lower end, more affordable um, Canon. T6i. T6i okay. with the... Um, strange, gigantic lens. That's not the lens it comes with. That's giant. And we also have a brand new, spanking new Canon RP, which is Canon's, um, which is Canon's mirrorless um, entry into the mirrorless DSLR market. The RP, I think it was a few thousand bucks. Is it an R or an RP? It just says R on the front. It's an RP though. Okay. The R is even more expensive, and has a better, better sensor or something. But the uh, R is Canon's, I think, one of their newest cameras, and that works great, too. Um, so the reason we wanted to get the R was because it has 4K HDMI out. That's a whole new topic for a, a whole other broadcast. But um, yeah, that's a pretty intense sensor there. So a lot of people have a lot of questions about that Canon feature. Um, one thing, which why don't we have a list of what cam Canons it works with? It's because, as far as we know, this will work with any Canon DSLR. And, and I tried to make a list at one point, and there's like hundreds of them. 
So, I mean, in one way, there's no way that we could actually try them all here at the office because we don't have them all. But um, the list is long. And um, what's really kind of funny is you, this feature actually works with um, some really old cameras from the 90s. I, I plugged in an old Canon that I had, and it actually worked as a webcam. I actually plugged in a Nikon, and that worked as a webcam. But we don't advertise this as a feature for Nikons because um, it's not going to be as it's not going to look as good. The the preview that Nikon sends over the USB cable is of, of a lower quality, um, so we don't advertise this as a Nikon feature. So yeah, so Carol was asking about Nikons. Um, Give it a try, the, Carol. Yeah, try try it over USB. It's probably not going to be very good quality. Um, we recommend for Nikons just using an HDMI encoder. There's a lot available. I got a pile of them over here. The CanLink 4K is a pretty nice box. There's also the, the Blackmagic Studio Mini Recorder, the really long name device. Um, Blackmagic really, Ultra really Studio. Not designed by Johnny Ive. You can see it's just a, a, a black rectangle with ports on one side and ports on the other. It's space gray, Glenn. Space gray? Yeah. Okay. And then this tiny little thing, and this connects through Thunderbolt, which can be a little awkward because um, you need all, you might need an adapter for that. And then this CamLink port, CamLink will do CamLink and four CamLink four K. You see the difference? <laughs> <laughs> the difference is very fine print on the back. This is the four K, um, and. We like it. It, it, will, it will take 4K HDMI video and bring it into your Mac. And um, Ecamm Live um, supports it. Um, or is it just the beta that supports it or the regular? 4K? You might need the beta for 4K broadcasts. The problem with the cam link that we've seen is, since it's a USB device, um, it's limited by your USB bandwidth. And if you have a USB hub or a lot of things on your USB, sometimes people can see um, some some tearing going on in the shot. The the uh, black magic, just like um, Al is saying, is pretty rock solid once you get it going. Um, out of the box, that uh, people have trouble getting them to work at all. But once you figure out the trick to getting them to show up and not just be black, uh, maybe that's why they're called black magic. But once you once you once you actually get them going. They're pretty rock solid, and they, they have the added benefit. Both of those encoder boxes have the added benefit of also bringing in the audio from the camera's microphone, um, which you don't get over USB. The audio from the camera's mic might be um, might be better than your built-in mic, or might be better. Yeah. Um, and another thing to, mention, to note about the CamLink 4K, I think this one's the 4K, um, when you're bringing in higher HDMI um, qualities, um, the CamLink 4K is going to introduce a delay into the stream. So if your plan was to use the video from the CamLink and the audio from a Focusrite or a USB mic like a Yeti, you're going to find out that those two things aren't matching up. Um, we actually have added um, support for an audio delay in Ecamm Lab. I can show you that really quick. What that's going to do is it's going to look and find all your microphones and delay the sound by a tiny bit. So in, in Ecamm Live's preferences, in the audio section, there's a slider here, uh, mic delay. It's that simple. And um, if I add a little mic, let's add a little mic delay. Okay, so now um, the audio should be coming in seven frames late. You know, seven frames. It's not my finger. So I don't know if that's Yeah, so if you set a mic delay, just don't forget to turn it back off uh, later. When you change cameras, oh yeah, right turn. yeah, that that's something we need to probably show on the screen when you have a mic delay. So One thing I was thinking of is like, should we tie that mic delay feature to the camera? So that would be a setting of the camera. The only problem with that is that right now we're using two cameras. So what if you had one camera that needed mic delay and one camera that didn't? We can't delay the mic to one camera and not the other. The mic's either delayed or it's not. So it, it's. And you can't put a reverse delay on things, it turns out. There's no such thing as a revert reverse delay. And without a time machine. Yeah. Um, a video delay, yeah, that just wouldn't really make any sense. And we're getting a lot of um, sort of camera-specific 
comments coming in. Um, um, Billy wants to know about um, t manual camera settings work on P mode. Can maybe you can speak a little bit more about that? That's going to be that's going to vary by which camera that you're using. Um, with my 50D, as soon as I switch into USB mode, none of the controls uh, do anything at all, and we're kind of stuck with the the exposure and um, aperture that the camera was in when we we activated it. Um, and uh, Joaquin's mentioning that his 80D is set to autofocus. Yeah, autofocus is an interesting thing because you know, in a sense, autofocus is kind of, it was kind of designed for still cameras, right? I mean, you're taking a picture, it automatically focuses on something. You see that kind of like fuzzy effect for a second, and then it's nice and crystal clear. But when you're using a Canon for this purpose, um, autofocus is great because you're not sitting near your camera. Um, it's great that it's automatically focusing on you. But at the same time, um, that's going to kind of not necessarily look super professional if you lean forward and then suddenly you see it go it's going to kind of break down the, the fourth wall there and the audience is going to go oh i just saw his camera out of focus one thing that i noticed was that with the canon uh rp is that what there's, there's that dial um with the different letters on it and if i was in p mode i did not get autofocus, as far as I could tell. But if I switched that dial to movie mode, then I got autofocus while, while I was streaming. So ex experiment with your camera. And um, it's going to be a little bit different. Um, Kevin's saying he keeps his Canon M50 on face tracking um, in movie mode, yeah. And that way, you don't have to worry about going out of focus. Now, John Eric's mentioning snap lens. I think maybe that is that is snap lens. Is that the thing you actually wear? No, no. Or is that snap, snap cam? He's talking about snap cam. So, so um, I don't even know if I want to mention snap camera, but um, you've seen those filters that everyone's familiar okay. with, with snap filters. This is the best thing that ever happened to Max. Was is, is snap cam now has a Mac app, shows up as a camera, and allows you to add all of the snap cam effects to yourself. Why would you want to do this? I don't know. Maybe you wanted to have um, dog ears or look like um, a crazy uh, devil or something. But can I make an executive decision here and have us not demo snap cam right now? Because that app is super sketchy and I just feel like it could crash the computer. Let's do it at the end then. All right, we'll, we'll do it at the end. Carol is asking an interesting question. Um, Carol wants to know, how can she capture email addresses during a live stream? She's looking at building, I think, a, um, a contact list both before and, I think, during a stream um, so that she can, people can sign up for information about her stream and uh, also so that she can get in touch with them later. Uh, this is something that, that uh, no one's asked me before. I don't actually have a quick answer for you, Carol. But I don't think that um, Facebook provides anything like that directly because they tend to be not email uh, centric. And um, why don't we why don't we mull that over and, and get back to you about how you might be able to do that. Uh, I know that you, you, you could certainly set up your own uh, form to capture information on a Google form or uh, Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Or we maybe maybe we can set something up. Um, I, I think um, Billy's asking about um, the T four I displaying a smaller screen when on multicam. Um, I think this is just kind of like a bug in the app that you're noticing. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. What you're referring to is if I go to um, if I turn off the crop mode. See, oh, let me just show you what I just did. So. Uh, when you're doing a split screen, there are two um, there's two possible modes you could use. There's the cropping mode that we're using now, where it's it's cropping off. It's called cropping mode because it's cropping off the sides of my frame, and it's cropping off the sides of Ken's frame, so that two 16 by 9 images are going to fill a 16 by 9 frame. 
Mm -hmm. um, but one thing I think we're not necessarily doing properly right now is these are not 16 by 9 frames. Um, when I go to this shot, it looks like a 69, 16 by 9 frame, but right now we're crop I'm actually cropping off the top and the bottom of this frame. Right. To fill it because it's because of the Canon sensor is not 16 by 9. But look what happens when I turn off cropping. Now we're getting um, what in the industry is known as as pillar boxing. It's actually putting black bars on the sides. So that is the actual size of the Canon's frame, uncropped. Yeah. And yeah. if we wanted to not do that, we would have to, uh, if we wanted them to appear 16 by 9, we'd have to go in a little bit and crop the top and the bottom Yeah. and then spread it back out. I think it's just a weirdness with how we're doing the split screen. So in answer to your question, Billy, um, we're just, I guess, doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this kind of looks kind of cool. It's, it's because the Canon source is not 16 by 9. Yeah, and we that's have a, we have a pan and zoom feature in Ecamm Lab, but I don't think that's that's not going to get rid of this pillar boxing. Like, watch if I zoom in. If I zoom in on Ken's shot, yeah, see, it's not. Huh. It's keeping that pillar boxing. So we're definitely not doing it right there. So ideally, you'd be able to zoom in and adjust. Um, you can. I know you can bring it out. So you're a little smaller than me. But yeah, something we need to address. You want to um, go back to cropping again? So, and Kevin's asking about, he's saying, I think it looks better actually. And can we add a background to that two shot? Um, we don't have a way to change that black background, but what you could do is, um, if you were planning this all out ahead of time, you could create a frame in Canva or Photoshop with some sort of transparent windows in it, and then just drag that overlay, drag it in as an overlay, and that's gonna kind of fill in all the black areas, and then you'll have a nice, you know, yeah. customizable frame. It's not ideal, but I do see people doing that a lot uh, to make a frame. Um, take some advanced planning. For sure, yeah. Yeah, that is a kind of a neat, a neat look. And when you're making that frame, you could make those openings be any size you want. So we could both be in squares, or rectangles, or triangles, or circles. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so I think, I think we will wrap this up. But there's one quick thing I want to show people, just kind of for fun here. Because I think some people may not know about the coolest feature in Ecamm Live, which is um, round picture in picture. Uh. So say you are um, demoing something on your screen. What can I demo here? Bring me in as a pip. Oh, bring you in? Yeah, bring me in. OK. So I'm going to bring in Ken's picture in picture here. So here's Ken. Hi. Kicking it in a rectangle. Now, let me show you my screen here. So all I need to do to change this picture in picture shape is um, right click or control click or um, two finger on the trackpad and click. Um, and I get a contextual menu and I can choose the shape. So let me choose round. And now Ken is in a round box. Sweet. Now, I think I like that because it really kind of adds a special roundness to your broadcast. Can I get a triangle? We don't have a triangle. What about a square with rounded corners? We don't have that either. We have tall. Hmm. So then I could kind of bring you in sort of kind of like a special guest over here in the corner. And if you can't figure out how to right click or control click or two finger click, um, you can actually go up to the options menu and you'll find the picture in picture shape right there in the options menu. Sweet. All right, this has been fun. Wow, we, we went almost an hour. And, uh, I think it's time to bring in the snap, the snap cam. Should we do like a little outro like we did for the intro? I think we should turn on the snap cam. Snap cam. Oh, snap cam. Okay. So, what? Just, just um, when we were at Social Media Marketing World and we were broadcasting um, from the conference, we tried to demo snap cam, and it just crashed the computer, and that was the end of the broadcast.
but they've updated it since then. There's been a lot of updates to Snapcam. The original version was pretty, pretty rough. All right, let me see if I can. Uh, is it stalled? I think so. This time. Oh, it's not going to work with the cannon. No? Okay. No, it's not. All right. Well, we're going to we'll use it with some other camera. Oh, these filters are terrible. Okay. Oh, that's just ridiculous. All right, here we go. Oh, so it's not coming in. No, it's not working. No. Just pretend like Glenn has dog ears. Sorry, guys. Well, it adds ridiculous filters. You get it. <laughs> oh. Well, John Eric's saying he needed to use eyeglasses to write it back in, but. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we, should, maybe we broke it or something, because Snapcan is supposed to be working. We'll take a look after the broadcast. But it should be coming into um, Ecamm Live. It should just show up, yeah, as yeah. a camera. Yeah, it's not for me, though. So, John Eric, you're not alone. All right. That was fun. Thanks for joining us, everyone. I hope, you can, I hope we can make this a weekly or maybe bi-weekly event. So queue up your questions and um, post them. Post them in the comments. Post you could even post them ahead of time when you see us schedule the um, the Q and A on the eCamp site. Thank you um, to everyone who tuned in today, and uh, I think we'll do another little outro. Can you cue up that music? All right, it's cute. All right, I'm gonna cue up my NDI cam here, and we'll go to this. Um... Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs>